So in this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 misconceptions about hair transplant surgery. Stay tuned. Let's start the countdown. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing great today. So decided to record this video because I see a lot of patients here in the office uh, that have all these wrong ideas and preconceived notions about hair transplant surgery that either they got from the internet or some other source. So I wanna make sure that we clear the air. So I put together the top 10 misconceptions that people have about hair transplant surgery, okay? Number 10, hair, hair transplantation is a treatment for hair loss. That's kind of tricky because, uh, yeah, I mean, we use hair transplantation to sort of treat hair loss, but it's not a treatment per se. A treatment is really the medications that we will recommend for you, depending on your situation, obviously, um, that will help you control your hair loss over time. Hair transplants are used to replace hair that you've lost. So when I do a hair transplant for you, I'm not really treating your hair loss, I'm actually you know, winding back the clock and replacing the areas that were lost or they're thinning with new fresh hair that is not going to be that are not going to be lost. So yeah, it's very important. It works great, you know, and has a great method. But if we don't really treat your hair loss, meaning if I don't put you on treatments to keep you from losing other hairs, then uh, I'm not doing you the best service I can because transplants are going to grow. They're going to stay there. But if you lose more hair, then we're going to have to do more surgery. And so the medical treatment for hair loss is actually medications and other things, but not transplants. Number nine, that you will ever need, that all that you will ever need is a one hair transplant procedure. That is uh, very, very wrong. And you should not expect that. When I tell my patients, when I counsel them, I always discuss the possibility or the likelihood even of a more of more transplants in the future because hair loss is progressive, it's dynamic. What I see today on your scalp, what you see today is not gonna be likely the same thing that you see in 10, 20, 30 years. So again, going back to the number 10, um, the one before, medical treatments are designed to keep you from losing hair and spacing out future procedures. But it's safe to assume that if you are having hair loss and you're facing a transplant, you're probably gonna be needing more as you get older. Number eight, that FUE transplants are scarless procedures. Nothing can be further from the truth. Every time you poke the skin with something, you're gonna leave a mark. Okay, so yeah, FUE procedures nowadays are very advanced and they we use very, very small punch diameters. So the, the incisions are really small, really tiny. But even in the best of situations, if you really look close, you may see some little dots along your donor zone. They may be very hard to spot and certainly you can shave your hair um, a lot shorter with an FUE than you ever could with a strip because there's no linear scar. The eye catches a line much easier than it catches really you know, seeing, uh, little uh, uh, dots here and there. But FUE procedures are not scarless at all and you should be aware of that. Number seven, uh, you don't need medications to treat your hair loss. That goes back to number 10 and number nine before. You do need to treat your hair loss because, well, this is a blanket statement, right? There are situations and situations. So yeah, if you don't need to treat it, I'll tell you. But more, than, more often than not, I'm recommending patients, okay, well, we can do the transplant for the hairline or for the crown or whatever, or for both areas, but let's do medications or medical therapy so that you don't lose more hair so you don't have to see me every year for more surgery. Okay, I'd love to see you, but we want to preserve your hair too. Number six is that FUE procedures are non-invasive. So I have a lot of times patients come to me for consultations and I recommend the procedure and we're talking about strip and FUE and they're like, well, I don't want the strip because it's much more invasive. I know the FUE is, is non-invasive. I'm not going to have any pain. There's no downtime, no scarring. So I want to go for the FUE. Well, those are all incorrect assumptions and incorrect information. FUEs are still procedures, so they're going to cause some discomfort, they're going to cause some downtime, they're going to, they're going to have to go through some healing, of course, that's just the way it is. Um, but one of the things that a lot of times I get patients ask me is, uh, it's less invasive. Well, I did a calculation a few years ago where 
If you take a thousand graphs with a strip and a thousand graphs with FUEs, the actual surface area of skin and scalp that actually gets traumatized by the punches and by the blades is a hundred times larger in an FUE procedure than it is on the strip. So, you know, keep that in mind. When you talk about invasiveness, every area of scalp or is a tissue that gets traumatized by the FUE is a hundred times larger than the strip for the same amount of grass. So that should tell you something. Now, it doesn't mean that the FUE is bad. I mean, it's a great technique and I love doing it, uh, but it's not uh, non-invasive, okay? Number five is that the strip method is outdated or antiquated. Not true either. I do strips all the time. That's how I was trained originally. I've been doing strips for 25 years or more. Uh, well, 23 years now, almost 25. And um, after a certain age, I stopped counting. So um, yeah, but strips are still great. They're still great methods. Some patients are much better candidates for strips than they are for FUEs. I do both. So I can tell you what I would recommend for your situation. If you prefer the other method, that's fine. As long as I think you're a great candidate. Some patients are actually better candidates for strips than they are for FUEs. We will discuss that in your consultation. So, uh, but strips are still very valid methods. They're very, uh, very good and they provide very good growth. So they're very well established surgeries, not antiquated whatsoever. Number four, ah, I can always have another transplant. So let's go for broke here on the hairline, for example. Use all my donor or as much as you can in there, thousands of grafts. And then if I need more, I'll need more. Well. You have to be careful because uh, we can only we only have so much donor hair. The supply of permanent hair on, your, on our scalp right now it's limited. So if you use a large portion of that donor zone for one area, say either the hairline or the crown, and then later in life you need to treat other areas because you lost more hair, you may not have enough. So. Um, me as a surgeon, I will counsel you against that and I'll, I'll always be thinking in the future for you uh, in order to make sure that we address the concerns today, of course, but also always uh, addressing for the future. You don't need to know that. I need to know that, but uh, just be careful, you know, don't be too aggressive um, in one area because you still have other areas to care, to care for later on, possibly. Number three, all hair transplant doctors are the same, just like... Uh, other, like, just like a, not every cardiologist or heart surgeon is the same, right? Hair transplant surgeries are different. Some of us have more experience. Some are still beginning now, they're starting. Some of us um, have, you know, all many, many different equipments that we use. Some of us have one preferable equipment. You know, a lot of us went to training specifically for hair. Some of us learned just by doing things. So. There's a high variability among experience and hair transplant surgery is a tip, it's a it's a very peculiar type of procedure. Uh, I think it behooves you to look for someone that has experience. Of course, we all we all have to get experience, right? And that only comes with time. But when I trained, I didn't start doing surgery right away. I did a fellowship program, so I was working under my uh, my training doctor. Um, until I felt comfortable to go on my own. And that's how it's done for every surgical training in every specialty, right? You start working with other people and then gradually you develop your skills and your knowledge until you feel comfort comfortable to go on your own. You just don't start, you know, tomorrow doing hair transplants if I haven't done that in forever and uh, expect to have a good a as good a result or as good as an outcome as you could have with someone with me that has a lot of experience. So that's another thing too. So look, whenever you choose for your transplant, look for the credentials in hair. Um, doesn't matter anything else, but how much time is that doctor doing hair transplants? Because that's an assurance that you're gonna have an experienced person taking care of you. Number two is that every uh, a hair transplant procedure is painful. Well, pain is very subjective, of course, so everybody feels it differently. Uh, I've had transplants myself. I'm not that great with pain. I didn't have a problem with any of them. Most of the patients that I treat, they don't complain to me about pain. I mean, there's a little bit of soreness, a little bit of discomfort that comes along with transplants for about two or three days. But we have medications that we can easily control that discomfort. Um, the procedure itself, sometimes I have patients that come in and say, well, I had a surgery before, it was very painful with someone else, and I have a, good, a bad experience. You know, of course, things can happen, and I'm not going to judge anybody here, but um, a hair transplant procedure should be also pretty pain-free when you're having it done. I mean, we have good anesthetics nowadays. We have uh, lots of medications to help you relax. And so 
it should be a good experience. And afterwards too, if you, it, I manage the pain pretty aggressively, meaning I'm, I don't mean I give a lot of pain medication, but you really don't need to. I have, um, over the years, I've developed different mixtures of anesthetics and different things that'll give you pretty long lasting anesthesia. And, uh, you know, I lecture about these and, and everything. I'm gonna actually uh, be giving a lecture about the anesthesia techniques that I use on an upcoming uh, International S uh, Society of Hair Restoration Surgery conference in October. So I always lecture there, but one of the specific lectures I'm giving this year is the anesthetic mixture that I use here, which provides, you know, long lasting anesthesia, very safe. And so, you know, there are things that we do that can minimize pain afterwards. But, you know, a hair transplant surgery is, surgery is actually a very easy procedure for the most part to go through. And the first misconception, the number one, is that uh, hair transplant surgery is simple, that anybody can do it. You know, going back to uh, that every surgeon is the same, it takes a long time to master all the nuances and all the details of a hair transplant procedure. When I teach at plastic surgery conferences, at cosmetic surgery conferences, these are doctors that are not doing transplants right now. I have them sometimes come visit me, visit me here in the office. Invariably, I hear from them, man, I thought this was simple, but I probably won't start doing it because uh, it's a lot of detail, a lot of things that can go wrong, you know, and you don't know until about a year later, right, when your results show up. So surgery for hair loss, hair transplant surgery, it's not an easy procedure. But it, probably I would venture to say is one of the most complex procedures because you have so many variables, right? Um, taking the hair out of the scalp and the act of physically putting it in there, you know, these sound pretty simple, but it's how you do these things that is as a difficulty and visualizing your results a year down the road, making sure that you put the hairs the right way, uh, that you don't traumatize the scalp too much, that you account for variability over time, you know. So it's a surgery that involves a lot of details, so it's not simple at all. Um, so these are, you know, again, the top 10 things that I found that, that can be uh, misconceived. So if you had those notions, hopefully this will help you. I'll be happy to discuss your particular situation. Of course, these are general, but uh, every patient is different. So come in for a consultation with me. I offer them online and also here at the office. They're free, won't cost you anything. If you like the video, click the like button down below. It'll help us. Leave your comments, suggestions for other videos. And of course, you can always subscribe to the channel, which we appreciate that. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you the next time. Um, stay healthy and take it easy.